the Auburn Tigers entering Legion Field in Birmingham, neutral site for the annual confrontation between Auburn and Alabama. They lost their first two games to defending national champ Miami and to Texas. Then they reeled off six straight, lost to Florida, have won their last two. So the Tigers come in eight and three with a chance to go to the Sugar Bowl, having won eight of nine. And here come the Crimson Tide of Alabama. One and four in the conference. They are trying to avoid finishing tied with Mississippi and Mississippi State for last place of all things in the SEC. They're normally on top. Ray Perkins is concluding his second season as head coach at Alabama. He's also the athletic director, and he's a beleaguered man right now, not having had a losing season since 57. A lot of people are all over Perkins in this state. Not so with Pat Dye, who in his three years at Auburn has turned that program around to the point where last year they won the Sugar Bowl and wound up third in the national rankings. This year they've had a lot of injuries. They had those two tough losses up front, and as a consequence, their ranking is only 11. They could conceivably, though, finish in the top 10 with a win here today and follow that up with a win against Nebraska in the Sugar Bowl. Freshman Robert McGinty of Auburn to kick off. Alabama won the toss. Alabama to receive on a gorgeous 60 degree afternoon. And it's a line drive kick on a hot field at the four yard line by Cedric Vaughn. Out past the 20 and upended at the 32 yard line. Alabama, multiple offensive attack. That is Don Shula's son, Mike, the quarterback. Paul Ott Carew and Ricky Moore are the running backs. Moore is the fullback. And the wideouts are Greg Richardson from Mobile and Clay Whitehurst from Nashville, Tennessee. From the 32-yard line, on the artificial playing surface at Legion Field, first and ten, Alabama. They've had problems with their passing game all season long. Shula and the other quarterback, Sutton, are both under 45%. And they start on the ground with Ricky Moore, who picks up the yard. The men who will lead the way, Thornton Chandler starts at tight end in place of Preston Gothard. Jim Ivey, 270 pounds. The tackle, Mike White's a good one, 241. Wes Neighbors, his father, Billy, was a great center at Alabama in the 50s. Bill Condon is the right guard. Gary Otten out of Huntsville, 6'6", 260 pounds. Right tackle. Second down and nine for the Crimson Tide from the 33-yard line. Carew, big hole, past the 45 to the 48-yard line. Paul Ott Carew is their leading ground gainer this season. Paul Ott Carew, who was recruited by Bear Bryant originally as a wishbone runner, takes the ball off right tackle, makes a good cut, and Nat Caesar, number 49, makes the tackle in the secondary for Auburn. He, as you mentioned, far and away their leading and most productive ball carrier in 1984. He's now gained exactly 700 yards this season after that 15-yard pickup. And he adds a couple of more as he gets past the 50 and into Auburn territory to the 49-yard line. A gain of about three. Green, Duchock, Holman, and Thomas are tough. 94-91, watch them in daily up front. McCurdy and Greg Carr is their big man, number 54, the linebacker. The secondary is injury riddled. They're missing David King, who has made a couple of All-America teams, but King has been out for the last three games. They're missing their top three defensive backs. Second down and seven from the 49-yard line. Delay, Ricky Moore can't get started and gets only to the 47-yard line. Ricky Moore out of Huntsville, Alabama, is stopped by Gerald Williams. The good news for Alabama is that the Auburn secondary is injury riddled and they're going with backup people. The bad news is Alabama has been unable to generate any sort of a passing attack this year. Passing has been inefficient for them and particularly they've had a problem on third down conversion. As a result of that, as I mentioned at the top of the show, offensively they have been inconsistent. Only 36% as you saw, third down and five with Carruth going in motion. And Shula handing the ball to Moore, and again, they're stopped on the third down play as Ricky is bunched up at the 45-yard line. Gerald Williams among those in on the stop. That play indicative of the kind of season Ricky Moore has had. He had great expectations. I talked to him yesterday, frustrated and disappointed. 
They had Kerry Good, who got off to a tremendous start. Those of you who saw the Alabama Boston College telecast in September will remember Good scored three touchdowns and then was hurt in the third period and suffered a season ending knee injury. So they've gone with Carruth and Moore as the men who carry the ball, and really they've been unable to generate very much. They're last in the conference in offense as Terry Sanders kicks it away and kicks it into the end zone, and the Auburn Tigers will take over at the 20-yard line. Auburn out of the wishbone. They'll go with Pat Washington. He's been injury-riddled this year. Thomas Campbell, the halfback on one side. Tommy Agee is the fullback, and the halfback in the bone on the other side is Bo Jackson. Clayton Buford is the split end number 11. You will see a lot of different running backs for Auburn. We just showed you the starters, the men who figured it do the bulk of the ball carrying today, but they are extremely deep. They go three deep at every position. Jackson is number 34. He's the key man. Would have been a Heisman Trophy candidate had he not missed six games with a shoulder separation. This is Thomas Campbell, who was hit immediately at the 21-yard line. Auburn offensive line. Jeff Parks is the tight end. He's caught 14 passes this season. Then they've got Eric Floyd, a 256-pound freshman. Jeff Lott also from the state of Georgia, right across the border from Auburn. Yan Coward is the center. Tamborello alternates with him. Randy Stokes is the right guard. And Stacy Searles is the right tackle. Freshman. There's Greg Carr in the Auburn defense on the bench as the offense works with a second down and nine and washington goes to the air looks one way throws the other has a man open and has a first down to ron middleton the backup tight end who takes it out to the 33 yard line and a marker is down penalty flag thrown at the conclusion of the play for a face mask Like most wishbone teams, most of the passes will be play action passes. Washington rolls left, looks back to his right, finds his tight end, Ron Middleton, number 87, on an out pattern. You see a face mask call by Vernon face Wilkinson, mask, number five 38. Yards. Defense, first down. Robert IA of the Southeastern Conference is the referee. Penalty takes it out to the 38, first and 10. Auburn Tigers, early first quarter, no score. Auburn with a victory, going to the Sugar Bowl. Pitch to Thomas Campbell to the short side, out past the 40 to the 43-yard line. Alabama defense, and they've done a pretty respectable job this year. Sol, Jarvis, and Hand up front, Hand's very good, 78. Then King and Bennett are the key men, especially Cornelius Bennett, 97, sophomore linebacker who's already made a couple of All-America teams, so watch him. Wilkinson, Robinson, Tripoli, a good one, senior, number 23, and Cooper form the secondary. Second and five for the Tigers out of the wishbone from the 43-yard line. Jackson has yet to carry the ball, and now he gets it. High pass the 45 to the 47, just shy of the first down. Cornelius Bennett making the tackle. Cornelius Bennett, who Al talked about a moment ago, has the potential to be a future superstar in college football. Only a sophomore, but pro scouts are already comparing him to Lawrence Taylor. And Ray Perkins, his coach, would certainly know about Lawrence Taylor, having coached the New York Giants. To the 49-yard line goes Jackson, enough for a first down as Wayne Davis Sophomore linebacker number 58 for Alabama makes the tackle. Story on Bo Jackson, just to refresh you, started the year as a Heisman Trophy candidate. He's only a junior. First game was the kickoff classic in the Meadowlands. They lost there to Miami. Then he separated his shoulder in game two against Texas. Auburn lost both those games. Then with him out of the lineup, they won six in a row. He came back, made a token appearance in the Florida game. They lost there, and he's been back since. Nearly jumping offside and drawing the flag, in fact. Trey Gaines came offside. He was flanked out wide to the right. And here's the call by Bob Aye. Head ball foul, illegal procedure, encroachment on the offense. Trey Gaines to split in number 19 as a false start. Try to get back, but too late. 
Toss him five and bring it back to the 43-yard line. And it'll be first and 15. Uh, illegal procedure. Encroachment offense. Pat Washington didn't practice Monday or Tuesday because of a groin pull. He's been bothered by leg and shoulder injuries for most of the second half of the season. Back to pass on first and 15. And throws complete to the 44-yard line to Clayton Buford. They alternate at that wide receiver spot. They have Gainis 19, Buford, and also Freddie Wagan when he's healthy. Buford, one of three tight ends who alternate, as Al just told you, runs an out pattern. Good coverage along the sidelines, but he gets in front of Freddie Robinson, number 21, and the ball is thrown low and outside, which is exactly the way the sideline cut should be operated. Meanwhile, Auburn is going to take a timeout after a 12-yard pickup. It is second and three upcoming with 8.49 to play. First quarter in Birmingham, Alabama and Auburn, scoreless. Second down and three from the 44-yard line for the Tigers and Auburn. And hit right away, Bo Jackson, met by John Hand, number 78. An all-Southeastern Conference selection is Hand. At 6'7 and 267 pounds. So Bo Jackson stopped for no gain. Third down and a long three. I talked to John yesterday. He says he's weighing 275 right now. Was recruited also as a basketball player. And has consistently come up with big plays for them. Earlier you saw where Alabama was having a good deal of difficulty converting on third down. Not necessarily so for Auburn on third and three. And the pass is complete for a first down to the 28-yard line to Trey Gaines. Cutting in over the middle and on third and three, Auburn keeping the drive alive with a first down now at the 28. Picture-perfect slant pattern here as Pat Washington fakes first to his fullback, sets up behind the tackle, and hits Trey Gaines on a slant cut right in front of the safety man and the linebacker. And Washington now three for three, perfect in the passing department for 40 yards, 16 on that last pickup. Impressive drive that started at the 20-yard line. Pitch it to Jackson, turns the corner. Inside the 20 goes to the 15-yard line. If Alabama is going to stay in this game, it's really going to be up to the defense. They cannot expect to score very much because they're last in the conference offensively. We told you about the weakness in their passing attack. And this has to be sort of dispiriting at the beginning for Alabama to know that their defense has to do its job. And here goes Auburn moving down the field very impressively. That's a good point. We talked with uh, Alabama and Auburn officials. Alabama felt it would be important to score first in the game. They wanted to contain Auburn early on. From the 15-yard line, it's Jackson inside the five to the four-yard line. They love to run that play. Rory Turner made the tackle. Flow to the right, give it back to Jackson going left, and it's first and goal. Crossfire or cross buck action. Fake to the fullback, hand back to Bo Jackson coming off the left side. Good hole there. And there you see some of the power that makes him one of the uh, great backs possibly in the history of college football depending on what kind of a senior year he has in 1985. And he's a world-class sprinter as well. From the four-yard line, straight ahead, Tommy Eiji, the fullback. They like to give it to him when they get down deep and he picks up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. It'll be close to the three, maybe the two and a half yard line where it'll be second down and goal. Because of his size and speed, Bo Jackson, of course, is often compared to Herschel Walker. One of the things the pro scouts say about Bo, however, they feel that he is a more multi-dimensional runner than Herschel. Second down and goal. Jackson, the right half back in this set. He takes the toss, and Jackson goes in for the score. And the Auburn Tigers go down the field 80 yards on their first drive and break out on top. Jeff Lott and Randy Stokes in the middle leading the way that time for Bo's touchdown. Unlike most wishbone teams that use the triple option as their base play, this is the base play for Auburn. It's the power pitch to their halfback, Bo Jackson, coming off the left side, following his blocking perfectly, and going in for the touchdown. 
freshman Robert McGinty attempting the extra point. He's made 30 of 31 and make it 31 of 32 with 6.15 to go in the first quarter. At Legion Field, Auburn 7, Alabama nothing. Ray Perkins, 12 and 10 in two seasons, formerly coached the New York Giants, and he talked about the difference in pressure between the colleges and the pros. Well, there's no difference in pressure because I apply uh, most all the pressure on myself that's applied there. As far as outside pressures, uh, you know, I've, I apply so much on myself that I don't feel those. But as far as the difference is, the major difference in college and, and pro ball is that college is a lot more time consuming. And it's a lot busier schedule because you've got so many other factions to attend to. Perkins in the second year of a five year contract, watching his team down seven to nothing. Bo Jackson went in for the touchdown. That's the fourth touchdown Jackson has scored against Alabama in his three years. The kickoff is fielded in the end zone and will be brought back out to the 20 yard line. So Alabama trying to get something started. They picked up one first down the first time they had the ball. The very impressive numbers right there. 12 plays, 80 yards, eight up a third of the quarter, and Jackson capped it. That is the definitive Auburn drive. It's exactly the type of opening Pat Dye was hoping for. Pat Dye coached at East Carolina, then one year at Wyoming. And now in his fourth season at Auburn. And boy, has the balance of power in this state shifted as Carruth carries out to the 26-yard line. Think back to the 50s. Auburn had some great teams and some decent teams in the 60s as we isolate on Carr here. Greg Carr, number 54, has already been named to the Football News All-American. You see him playing his linebacker position. He gets rid of a blocker there, then makes the tackle. And he, Al, I think is the embodiment of what we call the scholar athlete or student athlete. Very bright, well spoken, fellow. One of the big keys to their defense. Carruth again on the pitch. Tries to get to the 30 yard line and is just shy, I believe, and wait for the spot as Carr meets him along with Kevin Green. Greg Carr again in a game we covered earlier this year, Auburn, Florida. Carr had a total of 18 tackles in that game in a losing effort. Right. Florida just really blew them out of their offensive line that day. Blew Auburn away late in the game and they won a 24 to 3. Talking about the balance of power in this state and for years all you thought about when you thought about football in this state was Alabama and in particular Bear Bryant. The guy came in. Alabama had one nine straight. Now they've turned it around winning the last two as he sneaks to Shula for the first down. First down for Alabama at the 31 yard line. Mike Shula, sophomore from Miami. Son of Don, his idol was Bob Greasy. That was figured growing up. Question this year as to who would take over as the Alabama quarterback and even though Shula has seen a good deal of playing time the job has not been his solely because Vince Sutton has played quite a bit as well he's a freshman they're really trying to still find the right combination from the 31 yard line this is Don McLean carrying for the first time and he takes it to the 37 gain of six it'll be second down and four McLean a sparingly used back just 14 carries in the first 10 games this season in fact, McLean was on his way to being redshirted, but they needed some bodies and decided to go with him. From the 37, on second and four, Auburn nearly jumping off, and in fact they do as the play is whistled dead. It was Harold Holman, number 94, who was a little anxious. And that will give Alabama another first down. Perkins, really an impossible situation succeeding Bear Bryant. Second year of a five year deal. And as we say, and uh, it's no scoop, of course, any coach who's four and six after taking over for somebody like Bryant's going to feel the heat. Defense, dead ball foul, first down. 
earlier told you that uh, we'd have a telephone poll going today. It's a 50 cent call, by the way. There are the numbers. If you think Brigham Young should be number one. Yes or no, and we'll have the results for you at the end of the day, as this is just the first of two today coming your way. Florida, Florida State, the second hand of our doubleheader. On first down, it's Caruth taking it out to the 44-yard line. He stopped there by Gerald Williams. Well, I know how I'd vote, but I think I'm a little partial because I played in the WAC conference. Of course, then it was called the Skyline Conference. The WAC has not gotten a lot of respect over the years, even though they've played some of the more entertaining football in the country. Maybe the most entertaining brand of football through the years. Well, it's nothing like a WAC shootout. Yep. Second down and nine from the 43-yard line. Good protection. Here's one over the middle, complete for a first down to Preston Gunter. Tight end ran a little delay. He was wide open, and it's a first down for Bama at the 45 yard line. Watch Greg Carr, number 54, as he takes a precise pass drop. Notices the tight end coming underneath, then reacts to Preston Gothard, number 86, who catches the underneath pattern from quarterback Mike Shula. He does it all. First down for the tie from the 45-yard line. Moore picks up about seven. Ricky Moore is a senior. He's been their leading ground gainer for three years. This year, however, trailing Carruth. Would love to play in the pros and figures if he gets a chance to maybe play in an all-star game or two, he can impress it. Well, prior to, uh, prior to this season, he was projected as a high draft choice. He came into the 1984 season with six straight 100-yard rushing efforts. But this year, he is really still to get on track. Second down and seven, second down and three. Takes it inside the 35 to the 29 yard line, and Joe Namath, new husband, a great at the University of Alabama, All American in 1964, and as he's prone to do from time to time during the big games in Birmingham and Tuscaloosa, he'll show up. Through passes to Ray Perkins, and Ray Perkins also caught passes from Steve Sloan and Ken Stabler. First down, Alabama from the 29-yard line. Moore again slipping to the outside, but staying with him. Kevin Green, number 90, he slowed him up, and Art Johnson finished him off, number 40. Minute five to go in the quarter now. Seven to nothing. Second down and 11. Opens up for Moore. He exploits it as he takes it down to the 16-yard line. Kevin Green making the tackle. And this is the type of running they expected from Ricky Moore all season long. Impressive on this drive. Well, I talked to Ricky yesterday in Tuscaloosa when I visited the Alabama campus. And one of the things he told me was that he was really fired up for this game and he wanted to finish out strong. He said it had been a frustrating and disappointing season for him, but he could come away with good feelings if he had a big game against Auburn. First and 10 from the 16 on what should be the last play of the period. And Caruth is able to move down to the 10 yard line. So Alabama in the midst of a most impressive drive after Auburn had gone 80 yards and the first period is over. And with both teams staying on the ground, it was a quick quarter. And at the end of one, it's Auburn seven, Alabama nothing. It is exactly high noon in the Central Time Zone in Birmingham. As we start the second quarter, seven nothing Auburn, but Alabama has its second and four at the Auburn 10 yard line. This drive started at their own 20. It's Moore spinning and working his way close to a first down as he works to the six yard line. Ben Thomas and Ben McCurdy making the tackle. I told you Ricky was fired up. Coming into today's game, he had rushed for 313 yards on the season. But he wanted to have a good day today and he's starting out hot. 
You mentioned this is a, an impressive drive for Alabama. They've had a nice mixture of running plays, and they've had one high percentage pass. Mike Shula one for one. Very, very close measurement. And a first down. Crimson Tide first and goal now at the six yard line. Let's take a look at the numbers through 15 minutes. When you look at the numbers, you get a sense of how close the game is. However, and it's interesting, Alabama has dominated there in time of possession, something that they hope to do. That's kind of a, that's a surprise, frankly. I thought Auburn had kept the ball longer than that, but they, they went down pretty fast for that touchdown. Auburn's only had the ball one series. Very impressively going 80 yards. Alabama's had it the rest of the time, and they try to culminate it here with first and goal from the sixth. Puts it to Carruth as Moore throws the block, and Carruth scores the touchdown. Last year, the scoringest team in the Southeastern Conference. This year, last in offense in the SEC, but you'd never know it by that drive. Watch the effort by Paul Ott Carruth as he turns the corner and runs right over number three, Kevin Porter, right there, reaches out with the football, knowing that the ball must break the plane of the goal line in order for it to be a touchdown. Great effort by Paul Ott Carruth. Van Tiffin to attempt the point after. That's good. And so each team has moved from its own 20, 80 yards for a touch, and it's 7-7. Seven, seven. Auburn 7, Alabama 7. As Alabama gets set to kick off early in the second quarter, Pat Guy. Coach at Auburn had a chance to visit with him yesterday. Here's what he said. I think that the big motivation here is, uh, you know, I think that may be an added incentive, but I think the big motivation is just playing Alabama and uh, for the state championship. That means a lot more to these kids than, than uh, anything else surrounding the game. And that's the reason that this is a great uh, football game for the fans across the country to see. Pat Dye, who with a victory will watch his team go up against Nebraska in the Sugar Bowl. Again, if you joined us late, the situation is this. Auburn wins, they go to the Sugar. They lose, LSU goes to the Sugar Bowl. Auburn goes to the Liberty Bowl. If Auburn wins and goes to New Orleans, LSU goes to the Liberty Bowl. Terry Sanders is also their punter, does the kicking off, and it's taken by Fullwood. He hesitated, then comes out past the 20 to the 24. He was two yards in, and you can see him think about it for just an instant. And then he brought it out, and he brings it out to the 24-yard line. Well, BYU, should they be number one? And already we've uh, got 27,000 some odd calls, and the no's have it at the moment, 15,041 to 12,540. But it's very early, and a lot of people around Provo are just waking up. Still only, what, 11 o'clock in the mountain time zone? First down from the 24-yard line. Washington. They lay them on a two-yard drive. Pitching it to Jackson to the short side of the field. Bo looking for some room out to the 31. Now watch Jackson run because he was favoring that shoulder when he first got back into the lineup against Florida. We covered that game, and you can see it. Naturally, he had to be thinking about it, but they say he's running more straight up and down now. Second down, three. Auburn ripping opponents in the second quarter this season. That is a, an interesting statistic as Washington throws for Wagan incomplete. Freddie Wagan, freshman, and their leading receiver. It'll be third down and three. Another interesting thing is that this is surprisingly only the second time that Auburn has had the ball in the football game. Two outstanding drives by both teams in the first quarter pretty much took up all the time. Sure. Crazy aberration, though, when you look at the points in that second quarter. Auburn has scored 65 points in the first quarter, 60 in the third, 69 in the fourth, and 130 in the second. Campbell goes in motion. He takes the pitch and gets it out to the 36-yard line. 
Freddie Robinson making the tackle and they convert, pick up the first out of the 36 yard line. Good looking back is Collis Campbell. Not only do they have Jackson, but people like Campbell, Tommy Agee's done a nice job. They picked up Reggie Ware, a 238 pound freshman fullback, who I'm sure we'll see before the day is done, number 36. He was the most recruited back in the state last year. Also, Kyle Collins has seen a lot of action as well. Quite deep, Dye likes to keep the fresh backs in the game. Out to the 41 goes Bo. Gain of five, it'll be second down and five. I think they work with fresh backs as well as any team in college football. They really have five or six guys who they can just run in and out, keep them fresh. No one quite as uh, in the same category as, as uh, Bo Jackson, of course, but the rest of them are very capable. Tucker Fredrickson, when you go back over the honor roll, and Andrews and Cribs and Brooks all played there at the same time. And now Bo Jackson. Out again and working his way out to the 42 yard line. It'll be third down about three and let's check in with Lynn Swan. Thank you Al. Joe Namath, this Alabama ball club is four and six, but do records mean anything in this Iron Bowl? No, they don't. You know, this is a home state rivalry. Uh, that first quarter was some of the finest football I've seen played. There was a couple of penalties, but uh, both of these teams are really playing excellent football right now. Ray Perkins is an old teammate. Did you have a chance to talk to the ball club before the game? I sure did and I'll talk to him afterwards too, I hope. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Joe. <laughs> Third down and three now from the 42-yard line. This is Fullwood carrying, and he is bunched up at the 45-yard line by Cornelius Bennett, number 97, the linebacker. Talked about him earlier. We have him isolated here. Big play. Cornelius Bennett, number 97, the linebacker, is 6'4", 215 pounds, has 4'5 speed in the 40-yard dash. Superlative reactions as he takes on Brent Fullwood, number 22, right there. The punt is nearly blocked, but Colbert is able to get it away, and it turns out to be a decent kick, and it will be downed inside the 10-yard line as it dies on about the 5. And that's where the Crimson Tide will begin their next drive. 51-yard kick. We have 11-10 to play in the half. Ray Perkins, great receiver under Bryant. And he was an assistant coach with New England and with San Diego, head coach with the Giants, and then down to succeed the Bears. His team tied with Auburn 7-7. They have it from the five-yard line, first and 10. Moore, who looked very impressive on the last drive, carries for seven yards. Ricky Moore, who had 33 yards in five carries on the aforementioned drive, picks up seven more. That gives him 40 on the day in six carries. So he's making up for that disappointing season that we talked about earlier. Carruth on the uh, earlier drive had 40 yards in six carries, including the touchdown. Second down and three from the 12 yard line. Moore again. Let's face it, for the Alabama partisans, the winter will be a much uh, a nicer time to uh, spend uh, talking with the their Auburn counterparts if they're at least able to beat Auburn because you know the Auburn people are just going to remind Alabama partisans all winter long that they had their first losing season in 26. But if Alabama can win, that's salvaging quite a bit. Well, like so many of the great traditional games, this really is a one-game season. Third down and two now, with Carruth going in motion. Quarterback draw, and that didn't fool anybody. As Shula is stopped back at the 10-yard line by Ben Thomas and Pat Thomas. And Alabama will be forced to kick. Obviously, this was in... Auburn scouting report. I saw Vince Sutton run this play earlier this season against Georgia. He went 32 yards for a touchdown on it. No daylight at all that time for Mike Shula. Terry Sanders averaging 39-2. Longest kick this year. It was 53 yards against Tennessee. No win to speak of. 
high spiraling kick and a fair catch called for and made at the 45-yard line by Trey Gaines. Tigers have it there. 9:02 to play in the half. Pat Dye, head coach of Auburn. Coach, was that intended to be a fake field goal at the end of the half? No, uh, it was a bad snap. We had one second left on the clock, and because uh, we got him out there and got him lined up, and when the official took his hand off the ball, our son snapped it. I don't think our son ever got a really good grip on the ball, but he had to snap it because we didn't have any more timeouts. Alabama seems to be having their best success going into the middle of the line. Why is this? Well, we haven't, we just haven't played very well inside. They whipped us in there and run straight at us and goes a touchdown drive that they had they broke tackles and we just we did we weren't playing with the kind of intensity we got to play with you tell them anything special in the halftime not really we've just got to be more consistent on offense and continue playing like we played in the second quarter on defense okay coach thank you very much okay al thank you len so seven seven the halftime score and auburn to receive as we start the second half terry sanders to kick off for alabama it's a gorgeous day at Legion Field. Bright sunshine, temperature near 60 degrees. And the second half is underway with a good kick by Sanders, deep enough so there'll be no run back. Auburn will work against this Alabama defense. Brent Soule is the left tackle, and then Kurt Jarvis is a good one. John Hand up among the team leaders in tackles. Randy Rockwell, one backer on the outside. Emmanuel King was the most heralded of the Bama backers, but Cornelius Bennett has stolen some of that thunder with a great year, and Wayne Davis is an up-and-coming sophomore. They did a very nice job collectively in the second quarter. Pat Washington back in at quarterback as we start the third quarter, and Bo Jackson starts by only getting back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. Defensive backfield for Alabama comprised of Vernon Wilkerson, Freddie Robinson, and then Paul Tripoli from Liverpool, New York. A strong safety wrapping up his career today, and Britton Cooper is a sophomore. Pretty young team. Not many seniors. In fact, not many seniors on either team. When you look at Auburn in particular, next year in the preseason polls, they will probably be in everybody's top five. That many guys come back. Washington throws, and a sliding catch is not made by Campbell at the 27-yard line. It's incomplete. Pat Washington, the quarterback, Jackson, Campbell, and A.G. Again, a lot of alternating and then wishbone alignment, and also a lot of alternating at the split-end spot, and the men up front. Good offensive line for Auburn. Good friend of ours right there. <laughs> Of yours, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and 10 from the 20 yard line. Jackson stopped at the 21. And so the Alabama defense picks right up in the third quarter where they left off in the second. And Auburn is forced to punt. Again, to set the importance of this game for you, if you tuned in late and don't know about it, Auburn needs a victory here to go to the Sugar Bowl since Florida was declared ineligible for the conference championship. A loss would send LSU to the Sugar Bowl New Year's night against Nebraska. As Lewis Colbert gets the kick away. High, deep spiraling kick, and it backs Richardson all the way up to the 21-yard line, and he returns it to the 31. Alabama with its first possession upcoming now in the second half at the 31-yard line. Auburn defensively, Kevin Green is a senior. Gerald Williams, a junior, as you look at the line. Harold Holman, excellent. Junior from Macon, Georgia. Ben Thomas, 6'3", 275-pound senior. John Daly has intercepted a couple of passes this year from his defensive end spot. Crimson Tide, first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Don Shula's son, Mike, the quarterback, and he starts with a pitch to Paul on Carew. Looking for room to the outside, nothing doing. Run down by Gerald Williams, number 98. Take a look at the linebackers. We've talked extensively about Greg Carr in the first half, and Ben Curdy flanks him. Then the secondary, and it's injury beleaguered with Robinson and Kevin Porter at the corners, Arthur Johnson, and Nat Caesar 
the safeties. They lost Tommy Powell with knee surgery. We talked about David King, the third team All America. They lost him three weeks ago. So they're shaking back there. Shula has room. Gets out past the 40 to 45. And turns it into a nice gain and a first down to the 47 yard line. He's run out of bounds by Kevin Porter and Preston Gothard through the block that enabled him to spring it. Resourceful running here by quarterback Mike Shula. Play action fake, moves to his left. He's looking for one of his backs. Now watch what he does here. He makes a good cut, runs right by the uh, linebacker there. Finally run out of bounds by Kevin Porter, number three. 19 yards on that gainer for quarterback Mike Shula. First and 10 from the 48 yard line. Philip off two play fakes. Good protection. Complete to number 17, Greg Richardson, who was in motion on the play for another first down. Alabama on the move. Shula, the quarterback. He's gone all the way. Caruth and Moore have done the brunt of the ball carrying. Richardson made that last catch and Payne on the other side. And there's the offensive line. The five interior linemen alternate. They really have ten linemen, and they substitute with great frequency. They open up a big hole here for Carew inside the 15, the 10, and he takes it to the four-yard line. Arthur Johnson making the tackle. So the Alabama partisans are on their feet, and I imagine there's a little bit of cheering going on in Baton Rouge at this very moment as well. Watch the gaping hole for Paul Ott Carruth on a trap play off the left side. Good blocking up there with neighbors and Condon sets Carruth free. And then you see his bullish power there along the sidelines. Finally run down by number 40, Arthur Johnson, inside the five-yard line. 12 carries, 69 yards, first and goal, Alabama from the five-yard line. Carruth again, touchdown. The Crimson Tide come out and they just take it to the Auburn defense to start the second half. And Alabama leads 13 to 7. Eighth rushing touchdown of the season for number 16, Paul Ott Peru. A play sometimes referred to as student body left. Paul Ott Peru with a lead block from Ricky Moore simply follows his blocking into the end zone. That is the second touchdown of the day, his eighth touchdown of the year, rushing. Van Teffen's point after is good. And so Alabama, a one touchdown underdog, has the lead with 11.51 to play in the third quarter. Crimson Tide on top, 14 to seven. ABC Sports, home of Super Bowl 19. Paul Ott Carruth missed last year knee injury. He's a fifth year senior wrapping up his career. It's an odd thing to watch a senior at Alabama end his career in the Auburn game because this is a team that's been to a bowl game for 25 straight years. But not now and Pat Dye knows his team is going to a bowl game but right now they're headed toward Memphis and he'd rather be headed toward New Orleans. That's the problem. <laughs> Fourteen to seven is the score. Alabama on top. Terry Sanders, who's been kicking it into the end zone with frequency from the 40-yard line. Slight breeze in his back. Gets another good one away. Fielded four yards in, and they're going to run it out. It's Fullwood, who was a terror in high school. He once ran back three kickoffs with touchdowns in one game, but he has stopped at the 14 yard line. So Alabama a six point underdog coming into today's game now leads by seven. And as I said at the top of the show I thought they would need to play with more consistency on offense and get some work out of their special units. They have done that. They have played with their usual consistency on defense. First down from the 15 yard line. Bo Jackson tries to get something started. 
That picks up close to five. Vern Wilkinson making the tackle. A lot of the heat would be off Ray Perkins with just this one win. He's taken a tremendous amount of heat this year. With the first losing season since 57 and no bowl game. And just a lot of things that have combined to make it a very rough year for him. Alumni pressure, you can imagine, when you've had that much success. But some of the onus, some of the sting would obviously be taken off with a victory today. Out to the 24, Thomas Campbell. Shy of a first down by, let's go over the yard, and a third down play upcoming. Third and one from the 24-yard line. This defensive series could be a very important one for Alabama. They could stop them now with the momentum they have going offensively. It could turn the, uh, the game around for them. Third and one. The money man is Jackson, and he is out to just about the strike, the 25-yard line. Whether that's good enough for a first down or not, they may have to measure. That's exactly what I was talking about. Right there, a great defensive effort to really give the offense another shot in the arm. No measurement necessary. He is shy by half a yard, and Auburn has to punt. Not only that, Lee, now Alabama gets the ball back if they score again. The one offense you really don't want to be in when you're a couple of touchdowns down is the wishbone. It's a tough offense to come from behind with. It has never been a come from behind offense. Colbert's punt taken at the 22 by Richardson. And it's a six yard run back to the 28. And the ball, 9.41 to go, third quarter, 14 7 tie. Here, 14-7 Alabama, 28-yard line, first and 10 as they start this series. And it's Carew can look at those holes. The Alabama offensive line opening up huge holes here in the second half to the 35-yard line goes Carew. One of the reasons we're seeing such big holes in the middle is because of the work of number 54, Wes Neighbors, right there as he drives his man backward. Greg Carr he's working on right there. Good effort, good effort by West Neighbors, son of Billy Neighbors, who I played against in the old All-American, the American Football League. Daddy went to Alabama, played under Bryant from the 35-yard line. Moore has a first down as he takes it to the 39. First and 10, Gerald Williams and Harold Holman making the stop. West Neighbors got to play the part of his father in the movie Bear. Now that movie has been recalled, but it's going to be re-released. So number 54, very briefly, got to, uh, he went Hollywood. In that poll continuing, should BYU be rated number one by phone? And the no's happen at the moment by about a five to four ratio. First down, pitch it to Carruth, and a gain of three as he takes it to the 43-yard line. And it's Harold Holman again in on the tackle with Jonathan Robinson also coming up. Again, in that BYU poll, if you weren't with us earlier, you might call it the cost of 50 cents. If you think BYU should be number one, dial that number. No, you dial the other one. Rose Cup will give you his credit card number in the fourth period. If you vote yes. <laughs> Second down, second and six from the 44-yard line. This is Moore again, slithering his way over the right side of the 47-yard line, gain of close to three. It'll be third and two. Well, I like BYU's brand of football, and I think that Lavelle Edwards is long overdue to get some of the credit that he deserves. And a number one rating would be terrific for him. Only one game left for BYU, and that's the matchup against Michigan in the Holiday Bowl. Third down, third two from the 47-yard line. Shula, good protection, man open, first down as Richardson takes it into Auburn territory. He beat Jonathan Robinson on the play, and Alabama with another impressive march in the third period with 7.15 showing on the clock. 
Mike Shula with the hot hand right now throwing with good touch and timing looking for number 17 the flanker Greg Richardson on a crossing pattern Richardson the fastest man on the team outruns Jonathan Robinson number 32 Robinson finally catches him from behind near the sideline big play Shula three for five now 44 yards 14 yards on that last pickup and confidently directing them here in the second half but right now Alabama wants to take a timeout so they spend their first as Shula comes over to visit with Perkins at the 39 yard line 715 to play third quarter Alabama leads Auburn by seven the man I'm standing next to right now is Bill Neighbors his son West Neighbors it's a center on the football team Bill what have you and your son talked about in reference to this ball game well this is a great uh, uh, state rivalry for uh, uh, Alabama and uh, we talked about it uh, oh, since he's five or six years old about Auburn and Alabama and hoping that Alabama could beat Auburn. And when we do, it's a great day. And when we lose, we just wait till the next year. Your son playing well? He's playing good, real good. <laughs> okay, Al? We can't dispute that. In fact, uh, we had him isolated just a couple of plays ago. The man in the middle, number 54, West Neighbors, helping to clear those holes. And Alabama has marched down to the Auburn 39-yard line. They lead by seven. We are halfway through the third quarter. First and ten for the Crimson Tide. Carruth to the 35-yard line. Pretty clean game. Very, very few penalties today. I can't recall a fumble. No interceptions. Army is leading Navy 21 to three. What a turnaround from last year when we covered that game in Pasadena. Navy rounded them. Army going to the Cherry Bowl this year. BC 17 10. So the cross makes a game of it at the half. And the big rivalry there. Georgia on top 3 0. Second down, seven from the 35 yard line. Delay to Ruth. And that did not fool Kevin Green, who's having a pretty good day in number 90. One of the less heralded Auburn defensive people but Kevin Green having a good day Kevin Green number 90 the defensive end for Auburn plays this perfectly plays off the blocker keeps a low center of gravity comes right up to meet Paul Ott Carruth number 16 there before getting an assist from two other tacklers Kevin Green out of Aniston Alabama he's played exceptionally well of late walk on in 1980 Making his mark. And they discuss the penalty here. I think it's going to be holding against the tide. Alabama's already marched back to its own 45 to regroup. The clock is stopped with 623 remaining in the third period. Ray Perkins watching his team end its season. What were the rumors this week? You know, there are always a lot of rumors the week of the Alabama-Auburn game. Normally started by the other side, and not necessarily in this case, though. But uh, this, one of this week's rumors was that Perkins was out at Alabama, despite being in the second year of a five-year contract, and on his way to Tampa Bay to replace John McKay. He has, uh, I wouldn't say summarily denied it, but he has denied it. Holding offense. Second down. He has denied the veracity of the report and pretty much uh, expressed the other day that he felt it was something to take the attention of the Alabama players away from the Auburn game. Second down, 17 after the penalty from the 45 yard line. Moore takes the pass, breaks a tackle. Fumbles the ball and Auburn recovers at the but no Alabama's got it Alabama has it it looked like there was no conceivable way the Tigers wouldn't come up with a football he may have stepped out of bounds before the fumble we'll take a peek Shula to Ricky Moore on an underneath route right there missed by Greg Carr he cuts toward the sideline. Now, there's the fumble. No, he wasn't anywhere near the boundary. Arthur Johnson, number Ooh. 40. Fumbled it out of bounds. 
Yeah, they had it, but they couldn't maintain or regain possession of it. Third and 13. Shula drops it over the middle. It's complete, but stopped shy of the first down is Preston Gothard. He was wrestled down by Greg Carr. And since Carr was the only man in the immediate area, what Carr did was stop Alabama from getting a first down. That's a big tackle right there. Well, all of the activity on that last play <laughs> resulted in a three-yard gain. And Van Tiffin comes in on fourth and six. The ball will be spotted at the 42. That's a 52-yard kick, as long as of the season, 53 yards against Penn State. And he's 14 of 19. He is one of three for more than 50. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So another emotional burst for the tie on a 52-yard field goal after the drive bogs down, thanks mainly to a penalty. Tiffin makes it pay off for at least three. 5.09 to play in the third period. Look at the reaction of Van Tiffin, the very accurate place kicker number three when he sees it. And so with 5.09 to go in the third period, Alabama now leads by 10. 17 to 7 is the score. Auburn's only scoring coming on his first drive. The most impressive 80 yard march, but since then it's been Alabama's defense. And here in the second half, Alabama's offensive line opening up some holes. Kick is fielded by Brent Fullwood. He comes out from the corner of the end zone, and that's not a particularly judicious move because he didn't have much of an angle with which to work. To the 12-yard line he comes, and Auburn starts deep in its own territory. So the Tigers a favorite in this game, now trailing by 10 points. And you mentioned earlier the wishbone, not the most ideal type of offense when you get into a come-behind post, come from behind posture. It's really the kind of offense you like to get out front, control the football with ball control running. From the 13-yard line. Washington pitches it to Thomas Campbell, and he's wrapped up at the 14 after a gain of just one. Cornelius Bennett making the tackle. This may be the most talented sophomore linebacker in all of college football right here. Number 97, Cornelius Bennett. He has the size you like, 4-5 speed in the 40-yard dash, and remarkable instincts. He's already made the football news All-America team as a sophomore. Up to the 18-yard line. As Pat Dye watches Bo Jackson set up an impending third down and six. If Auburn loses, they go to the Liberty Bowl. They would meet Arkansas at Memphis on December 27th and it would also mean LSU would go to the Sugar Bowl New Year's night in New Orleans to take on Nebraska third down and six from the 18 yard line Washington the Texas strikes to break down and down he goes back at the 10 yard line and everything going Alabama's way right now offensively defensively emotionally Very evident throughout Legion Field as you look around and the clock ticks down with 325 to go in the third. Are you trying to tell me the tide has turned? Well, <laughs> the tide has definitely turned. Lewis Colbert stands in his end zone, picking into a very light breeze. Low snap, almost at it block, and it's a wobbly and very short kick, and a fair catch is dropped, and loose at the 50-yard line, and recovered at the 46 by Alabama. Big break for the Crimson Tide, because that's the kind of play that really could have turned it around for Auburn. Fumble right here, 
as Greg Richardson, the return man, loses his concentration and the football. And it's covered there by Freddie Robinson, the free safety. 2.52 left in the third, tied by 10. Here, Alabama 17, Auburn 7, 11.24 to go, and Auburn with its wishbone offense down by 10. By the way, if you're thinking about a tie, if this game were to wind up in a tie, then the Sugar Bowl committee would select Nebraska's opponent. Option play with Washington back in, and that nets only a yard. Kurt Jarvis made the tackle number 95, and there's another penalty. We had a penalty, basically a penalty free first half, but a lot of flags now in the second half. Auburn has been totally ineffective today running the triple option, which you figure is one of the key plays in the wishbone offense. The play was a first and ten play. The options being discussed here with Washington, who has gone most of the way. Man came in at the end of the first half, and then Man was in for the last series. And now they go back to Washington again. And it's another penalty against Alabama, taking it out to the 25. Here comes the call. Face pass, inadvertent, five yards. On the option play, Washington starts to cut up field and watch for number 87. It's number 87, Larry Roberts, grabbing him right there. He reaches over the shoulder and pulls him down by the face mask. So it's first and five now from the 25-yard line with Wagan setting up to the right. Washington back to pass, looking left, throws incomplete at the 32-yard line intended for Ron Middleton. With that wishbone, Auburn, uh, the wishbone, of course, tells you that the team doesn't pass a whole lot. Here they were in a passing situation. There were really only two men in the pattern. They sent Middleton out to the left, and they had Wagan split to the right, but he was well covered. Number 87, Ron Middleton, the tight end, is sliding out toward the sideline. He was clear momentarily had this ball been thrown a little bit lower and to the inside. However, it was catchable. <laughs> Second down, five from the 25, 10.54 to play in the game. Straight ahead, Tommy Agee, gain of one. And on third down, Bo Jackson carries around the left side, out past the 30 and a first down as Valletto makes the stop out at the 34-yard line. I said earlier that this is the base play for Auburn in the wishbone. It's the power pitch to Bo Jackson, their halfback, brought down in the secondary by David Valletto, who had an interception earlier, a key play for uh, the Tide. And that's been Bo's most effective running play along with the crossbow. From the 37-yard line of Washington, back to pass, throws incomplete. That first down, by the way, for Auburn was their first first down of the second half. The defense has been that dominating for Alabama, and their offense has controlled the ball enough of the time. 10-03 to play in the game. Good news for Bo Jackson fans. He has a 100-yard game today. 19 carries now for 101 yards. And I think he will come back as probably the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy in 1985, just as he was in 1984. He and uh, Keith Byers. Exactly. Ohio State. Second down and 10 from the 37-yard line. Kyle Collins takes it out to the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and seven. Auburn is going to need more of this. Look at the surge on the right side. Now, controlling and dominating the line of scrimmage is the key to any effective running game, and that's exactly what Auburn does here. Third and seven, 9.25 left in the game. Pretty critical play here for Auburn as Washington pitches at the last minute. They get the first down, and it's Fullwood who gets out in front. 
forward inside the 20, the 10, all the way for the touchdown. On a critical third and seven, a play on which they were looking for the first down just to keep possession and avoid having Alabama take more time off the clock. They wind up scoring a touchdown, and all of a sudden, it's 17 to 13. Brent Bullwood, who because of Jackson's injury, saw a lot of playing time through the middle of the season and is their leading ground gainer, has just gone in for the score. He had 564 yards coming into today's game, and he added 60 more with that touchdown carry. Watch how perfectly this is set up by quarterback Washington right here. Now he goes to the corner, then pitches. Number 22 gets cuts inside. Good block by Middleton. Now he cuts back inside. Juke step back to the outside, lift leg, and on into the end zone. Great block along the way by Steve Wilson, number 75. You have a very interesting situation right now. Auburn took a timeout because you would think, okay, normally you go for the one point here, you got a lot of time, all right, then you kick a field goal maybe later on, and you, you settle for a tie. We mentioned before, this game ends in a tie. We were talking to some of the Sugar Bowl people before the game. The committee is ready, and they would have the answer by tonight, but they would vote on the representative, be it LSU or Auburn. And I was talking to a couple of the fellas and really couldn't get an indication as to which they thought would be the team. So now Die, knowing this, has to figure, do I go for two here and try to win it with a field goal? Go for one and set up for the tie, and they're going to go for two. He's going for the win. That's why they took the timeout. So they go for two, and it's Washington pitching it, and they get the two points because Jackson gets into the corner. So it's 17 to 15, and they set up what they hope will be a game-winning field goal down the line. Two plays in a row. The timing has been perfect on the triple option. Something that has been ineffective thus far. And Bo Jackson outruns David Valletto, the safety man, to the corner of the end zone. So it's now 17 to 15 with 9-11 to play. I give Pat Dye a lot of credit right now. Pat Dye really thinking ahead, and nobody can accuse him of trying to back in anything, though people will contend if his team winds up in the Sugar Bowl, they backed in because of... Florida's impending probation, but he thought about it, and I'm sure that had a lot to do with his decision right there to go for two points. Gut check time. Give, give the man some credit. He's not thinking about the tie, and, and he could have gotten away with it, too, with 9-11 to go. He can figure, well, I got enough time to score a touchdown, but he's thinking, well, what if? What if we only get three more points? Well, three more might send him to the Sugar Bowl. We'll find out. 9-11 to play, and the kick is taken in the end zone by Vaughn's and they'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. And what if Alabama has another long time consuming drive, which they did earlier? Good thinking. Gutsy. And a lot of things to look back on in this half. Uh, remember they decided to punt at Alabama instead of maybe attempting another long field goal after Tiffin had already kicked one of 52. The punt went into the end zone. That last drive started from the 20. Big play by Fullwood, of course, the 60-yard run. And now it's very noisy on the Auburn side of Legion Field as Alabama starts to drive, and it's Carruth taking it out to the 22-yard line. This is a neutral site. Birmingham, 120 miles from Auburn and 60 from Tuscaloosa. Even though Alabama plays a lot of its home games, they have played a number of their home games, about half through the years here. But as far as the ticket allotment is concerned, half of the tickets go to Auburn, and the other half to Alabama for the annual confrontation. Second down and eight from the 22. Shula's done all the way at quarterback. Carruth again, who has scored twice, bunched up at the 21-yard line by the fired-up Auburn defense. Gerald Williams, 98, continues to have a good day, and Greg Carr helped out, 54. 
Old Moe's got a white jersey right now. <laughs> Thanks to Fullwood. Third and nine from the 21-yard line. Clock is running. Eight minutes to go in the game. Alabama leading 17 to 15. Shula sending everybody in the pattern and it's intercepted. Intercepted and taken down to the 17 yard line. Kevin Green. Another big play. Ricky Moore had it in his hands. It popped out. And Auburn is at the 17 yard line with a first and 10. Shula with straight drop back protection here. Moves forward in his pocket, looking for his fullback, Ricky Moore. Has the ball momentarily, bobbles it. It's picked off by Kevin Green, the defensive end, number 90. And now Auburn has opportune field position and could put this ball game away. Tigers at the Crimson Tide 17 yard line. Jackson slips as he tried to get on track, and there's no gain on the play. Seven and a half minutes remaining. And has this one turned around in a big hurry? Fullwood went 60. They picked up two on the conversion. The interception now. And they're at the 17 yard line with it second down and 10. Jackson coming off for the moment over 100 yards on the day. Pat Washington calling the signals. The fake. And then he had trouble on the exchange as he tried to take it out of the grasp of Tommy Agee and John Hand came in to make sure there was no advance. That's right. He never got past his fullback to execute part two or three of the triple option. Third down, 10, 18 yard line. It's gonna be pretty quiet right now at Baton Rouge, where there was a good deal of excitement, I'm sure, not too long ago, as the LSU players and staff look on. Auburn was down by 10, but they're only down by two now, and Washington's gonna take a timeout. And that's the second timeout they've used, so they're down to just one remaining. 6.25 left in the game. Alabama still on top precariously. Well, it is shaping up that way, because Alabama, is leading by only two, Jim, but it's third down and 11 upcoming for Auburn after that timeout. Ball at the 18-yard line. Pat Washington, the quarterback, out of the wishbone. It is Jackson breaking it inside the 10, down to the four. And how many teams on third and 11 are going to run? But when you have Bo Jackson in the backfield, you might as well take the chance. Taken up is Cornelius Bennett, the linebacker. That would be a big loss. Bo Jackson. What a remarkable comeback. He's continuing that comeback. Shoulder separation, missed six weeks. Now regaining the speed, the strength, the power that has made him such an awesome performer. Watch how he runs right by and over number 97, the All-American Cornelius Bennett. Breaks another tackle there. Second effort, third effort, fourth effort. This man is 6'2", 222 pounds, has 4'2 speed in the 40-yard dash. Now that does not compute. You know, when you think about it, I'm trying to think back. When's the last time you saw a, a similar play, third and 11, and watch what would be referred to generally as a straight run? Occasionally, you might see a draw or some kind of gadget play on the ground, but almost every other time, you're going to see a pass, but not with Jackson. When you have a superstar in your backfield like that, it gives it a totally different dimension to your offense because then you can do things like that on third and obvious pass situations. Meanwhile, Bennett, very slow in arising, and there's one of your key defensive people, man who earlier this week made the football news All-America team, and he's a sophomore, so a great future for 
Cornelius Bennett. But for the moment, he comes out of the game as this one winds down. Florida and Florida State get ready to kick it off at 3.30 Eastern time. It is first down and goal from the four. Auburn down by two. Fullwood, who scored the touchdown earlier, there's a flag thrown, and he is pushed back from the one-yard line. Got down inside the two, and a penalty mark. Rory Turner in on the stop, and the penalty is against Auburn. Really hurt him here in the, in the second half, especially this particular time, instead of first and goal, or had there been no penalty, second down and goal from the one-yard line, they'll be pushed back. Frustration showing there on the face of Pat Dye, who has been involved with championships at all levels of competition, including the, the service. And in his college days, he was a co-captain with Fran Tarkenton at the University of Georgia back in 1960. Holding offense. And from the spot of the foul, it takes the ball back to the 11-yard line. Makes it first and goal from the 11. Clock is running, 5.49, 5.48, counting down. They break the bone. Send Jackson in motion and give it to Fullwood. On a counter play, he takes it only down to the 10-yard line. Gain of a yard, maybe two. Second and goal. Well, they told me this was an intense rivalry, and they were right. This game has been everything that uh, I could have asked for. As I said at the top, it's my first experience, direct experience of Auburn, Alabama football. Odd game with the way it's shifted. Where the, the flow of this one is gone. Second down and goal. Washington pitches it to Fullwood, and he is wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Good job by the Tide of springing out, springing out the option play there. Scott McRae, the linebacker, was the man who made the big play. From the end zone, a different look. The pitch there to Brent Fullwood, number 22, who had that 60-yard touchdown. But right there to meet him is linebacker Scott McRae, number 45, who's been playing behind Wayne Davis. He had been a starter earlier in the season. Now he's now replaced Cornelius Bennett. Third down and goal, 425 remaining in the game from the 10 yard line. Washington keeps it and gets to the one yard line. So now it's fourth and goal, and Pat Dye has to make the decision. Do you go for what figures to be the sure field goal and go up by a point, or do you try for the touchdown? That's his decision right now. I think I'm going for the sure field goal. I do too, with all that's at stake for him right now. Fourth down goal. Inside the one yard line. Bennett has come back in defensively. And Dye has elected to go for it. To go for the touchdown. So the critical play of the game right here. On fourth down and goal. It's Fullwood, and he is stopped. And will they talk about that play for years? With 3.27 to go in the game, Rory Turner ran him out of bounds, and that will be forever ingrained in the lore of this rivalry. If this final score doesn't change, they'll be talking about that from now to the year. 2020 in Birmingham. Absolutely. Crossfire action. Brent Fullwood, number 22, trying to get to the corner. And Rory Turner, with perfect position from his safety position, comes up to force him to the boundary and the takedown. And just as you said, that's got to be one of the most controversial calls in the history of this series. Unbelievable. Alabama with the ball, and they're going to just try to use up the clock, but they need our first downs as Moore takes it out to the seventh. No mystery here. They have to stay on the ground. 
and what they really need are about two first downs. If they can get two first downs on the ground, they should be able to run the clock out. Auburn only has one timeout left. And it's so uncharacteristic of that man, Pat Dye, who is such a fundamentalist, essentially very conservative. You figure he has moved the ball all the way down there. All he needs is a field goal and what would certainly be, you would think, a sure field goal to win it. Why did he call a fourth down play like that? I don't understand it. I have a feeling that just might be the first question asked after the game. On second down, it's Ricky Moore taking it out close to the 11, and a very big third and three is coming up as you look at Ray Perkins. What's truly amazingly is that what Dye did before was he set up the game-winning field goal by opting for the two-point conversion. So he got to the position where he could manifest exactly what it was that he did and didn't take advantage of it. But I guess when you're inside the one, you figure you can put it in. It's still one of the most unbelievable calls that I have seen in all of the years that I have been covering college football on television for ABC. And not only that, you don't give it to a Bo Jackson. Then again, you can figure, well, maybe Dye thinks they're going to key on Bo, so give it to Fullwood. Well, it didn't work. Third down and three for Alabama. This is a crucial play for the Auburn defense, and Alabama takes a timeout. 2-0-1 to play in the game. It's been a wild one with Alabama leading by two. Two oh one remaining. If Alabama can pick up a first down on this play, it's possible they can run the clock out. Auburn must stop them. It's third down and three. Alabama has it. We're going to go back very briefly. Here's that fourth down play again. You can see Bo Jackson was in the game. 34. He goes left. Fullwood goes right. A play that may possibly live in infamy for Auburn. Third down and three from the 11. Alabama split backs to Ruth and Moore, and Shula's going to throw. On third and three, incomplete. He attempted to hit Preston Gothard, the tight end. And so Auburn's going to get the ball back. So the Tigers will try to get off the hook. They certainly have the time remaining. Funny, when you look back at 1982, if you follow this series, Auburn won that game 23-22. When Bo Jackson scored a controversial touchdown, controversial in the sense that some people didn't think he crossed the plane of the goal line on a fourth and one late in the game. Today they opt for Bullen. He can't score, but they're going to get the ball back as Terry Sanders kicks out of the end zone. High, pretty good distance. Fielded at the 43-yard line by Venus. Dropped at the 44. Rory Turner makes the stop. 46-yard kick. Auburn has the ball with 145 remaining in the game and one timeout. Alabama leading it by a score of 17 to 15. Auburn has it at the 44 yard line. Each team with one timeout remaining. Robert McGinty is a freshman. He academically is a sophomore. He redshirted last year. Comes out of Florida. He's used to pressure. He kicked the field goal at the end of the game to beat Mississippi State. And it may come down to his foot for the Sugar Bowl. It's aging who takes it out to the 48-yard line. As far as McGinty is concerned, what's his range? Well, his longest kick this season, 53 yards against Cincinnati. So that would be if you move the ball to the 36-yard line, you'd spot it at the 43. We have movement in the line, and we have five flags. Left side of the Auburn line appeared to jump first, and that is the initial indication. Illegal procedure against the Tigers with 121 to go in the game. That's one of the reasons the wishbone is not as effective for hurry up football. Because you figure they're going to run the, the surges going forward instead of those linemen backing up the pass. Dead ball foul. Illegal procedure. Offense broke the play. First down. Well, he said first down, but it's second down. They've already run a play. Second down and 11. at the 43-yard line. Washington back to throw. Gets blindsided. Dumped at the 38. Randy Rockwell, number 57. A freshman.
and the clock keeps running. Under a minute now. Weak linebacker Randy Rockwell, number 57, comes on the backside, applies the pressure right there. The quarterback, Washington, and down he goes. Third down and 15. Back to throw over the middle, completes it to Fullwood. He gets over the 50, takes it to the 49, and you've got fourth and two coming up. And you've got Auburn also taking a timeout as well. With fourth and two coming up and 33 seconds remaining. What this timeout also means is even if they pick up the first down, somewhere down the line, they're going to still have to figure out a way to stop that clock to set up a field goal. But first things first, and Dye needs to take the timeout to discuss the play of the year right now for Auburn. Fourth down, two yards to go. Thirty-three seconds, and now no timeouts remaining. Credential College scoreboard will follow, and then Florida against Florida State for the second half. LSU looking on, I would imagine, with more than intense interest at this particular play. <laughs> the Sugar Bowl people looking on with a little bit more than detached interest. No detachment there. If, again, the situation, if Auburn wins the game, they go to the Sugar. They lose the game, they go to the Liberty Bowl. If they lose the game, LSU goes to the Sugar to face Nebraska on New Year's night. All right, Washington has the play from Die. Fourth down, it's a short two, it's about a yard and a half. Just inside the 48 yard line. No timeouts left. They send Wagand wide to the left. He's the only man who split. They seek the first down with Jackson. And Jackson gets to the 45. He has the first down. That stops the clock temporarily. But as soon as the referee signals it's ready for play, the clock starts again. So momentarily, it's stopped with 28 seconds. No time for a huddle. As soon as the arm of Bob Aye goes in motion, the clock will start. And it's ticking down now. 25, 24, Washington back to pass on first down. Incomplete. That stops the clock. Pressure put on by John Hand, number 78, who came roaring in. 20 seconds to play in the game. Big John Hand, who has made plays for them like that for the last two or three years. We talked about his size, 6'7", 275. Probably an All-American in 1985. 45-yard line. Second down and 10. This time, Fullwood and Wagand are both split to the right, and Gainis is sent to the left. Washington gets good protection. Looks Gainis' way, right, has him. He gets out of bounds at the 25, and all of a sudden, they're back in field goal range. At the 25-yard line, it's Trey Gainis with 14 seconds. Now, if you're Pat Dye, do you go for it now, or do you try one more play? and try to get the man out of bounds because what's going to happen is if you complete a pass over the middle you might not have a chance to get him in and with no timeouts now they opt for McGinty. <laughs> what a what a wild one this has been. Robert McGinty, 42 yard attempt at an angle. Snap is good. The kick is long enough but it's wide. says nine seconds there are flags down for a penalty after the play against Alabama because the celebration went on 
So many of the Crimson Tide ran out onto the field. There was a heart-stopping moment for some Alabama partisans when they started to look at the flags and thought that Best it may deal with Alabama. offside. Alabama, end zone celebration. End zone celebration, that's it's an, it. It's an after the fact, but for just a moment, you could sense some of the Bama people feeling that the penalty may have taken place beforehand. Meanwhile, the reaction of McGinty speaks for itself. I think he knew right away he'd missed it. I think he stepped too far forward with his left foot. And he undercut the ball. As a result, he hooked it. Mike Mann is the man consoling him right there. And there you see the countenance of Pat Dye. Pat Dye will live with this one for a long time. He did get the second chance to win it. But still, the big question afterwards will be, why didn't you attempt the field goal early on? When you had the ball at the one-yard one. line. And you weren't sure you were ever going to get it back at that point. So Alabama can just run one play and celebrate. And Alabama finishes with its first losing season since 1957. But it's not going to be a bad winter for the Crimson Tide Partisans because they have just pulled off a stunning upset and denied Auburn a trip to the Sugar Bowl. McGinty who reached the heights against Mississippi State a month ago with a game-ending field goal. We've had another penalty, and that has stopped the clock with six seconds against Alabama. And McGinty reaching the depths today with a chance to win the game and hooking it. Ray Perkins in what has been, on balance, a pretty dismal year, especially with a team as tradition-rich as Alabama, will at least close it with a dramatic victory. And one to be discussed and discussed over and over and over for a long time in the state of Alabama. The Crimson Tide has won it. Finishes five and six. Auburn goes eight and four. They'll play Arkansas in the Liberty Bowl. LSU, Nebraska to the Sugar Bowl. Well, it was pretty much of a textbook game plan. The things that I said at the top of the show were in evidence for Alabama. Let's go to Lynn Swan. Lynn? Coach, everyone wants to know what your thinking was when you didn't go for the field goal and tried well, for the we touchdown. Had, we had... With the ball sitting at that point on the hash mark, with about two feet to go for a touchdown, our chance to make a touchdown just as good as it was a field goal. And uh, plus the fact, a field goal would have put us, what, uh, one point up, and a touchdown would have put us uh, six points up, and then taking more than a field goal to beat us. Of course, him to go for the field goal. Did the success of that conversion going plus for two points I thought we'd get the ball back, you know, like we did to get back in, in field goal range? When you went for the conversion to two points after scoring your touchdown, that kind of success gives you a little more confidence going well, for the play? I think, I think you know, we, they had just dominated us and shut us down so much with the, with the bad defense, shut our offense down so in the third quarter that, the, you know, the, the long run kind of gave us all a little hope. And, uh, of course, after that, we get the turnover and the interception. And we should have got it in. We have a holding penalty and whatever. But... Alabama deserves all the credit in the world. Coach Perkins and his staff and players, they played hard. They had a great plan. Did what they had to do to win the game, and we didn't. And that's football, and that's life. And we're disappointed, but uh, we'll come back against Arkansas or whoever in the, in the Liberty Bowl. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Good effort. Al? Thank you, Lenny. You know, we don't want to get gushy, but, you know, we've been around Lee, you and I, long enough to know there aren't too many coaches in college football who would have stood on the sidelines for that interview at that moment. And to dive just for being there, a lot of credit. Absolutely. Anyway, he's still going to get second guest from here to Kingdom Come as we take a look at an exuberant Mike Shula, the quarterback for Alabama. Now, here's that fourth down play again. Brent Fullwood on a misdirection pitch. And watch Rory Turner, number 37, force him to the boundary. 
in what's going to be one of the most controversial plays in Southeast Conference history. The final missed field goal. Look at the left foot. He steps too far forward with his left foot. As a result, he hooks, he misses. Frustration, consolation by man the holder. George Hill, Kelly Hayes up here. Thank you guys. A great job as always today and through the year. Final score, Alabama. 17.